that poor AK, I... Now, I, I know the Forgotten Weapon's cursed crink was bad, but... It's gotta be the worst AK I've ever seen! Dear God, that is the most cursed AK build I've ever seen. No. No, no, this is unacceptable. You stay put. Daddy's coming. So it took a lot of doing, but I finally have acquired, in this bag, what could only be described as the worst, just most cursed AK I've ever fucking seen. So in this video, we're gonna show you guys what this is, talk about what it is, how it was built, and maybe even attempt to shoot it. Because if this thing actually runs, that is beyond a Christmas fucking miracle. Alright, so let's take a look. Uh, ah, silly me. First, time to thank the people who helped with those last minute flights. Real quick, I'd like to thank our sponsor, Lords Mobile. Now wait, before you skip ahead, just know that there is real cash in it for you. Now, not only can you enjoy the same exciting experience as me, but you can win one of their massive giveaways for $5,000 cash. Now, many of my old friends know that Lords Mobile is one of the best strategy games I've ever played. With Lords Mobile, you can kill anywhere, anytime, wait. With Lords Mobile, you can kill time anywhere, anytime. You'll step into an awesome 3D simulation world to create your own city, and there are plenty of things waiting for you, like upgrading buildings, conducting research, leveling up your heroes. For people who like playing with friends just like me, Lords Mobile is perfect for you. You can chat with players from all over the world and even build a guild with them. But if you only have a few minutes to chill, Lords Mobile now provides the three-minute tower defense game mode with hundreds of card combinations you can really enjoy anytime, anywhere. Lords Mobile recently carried out its great update, Artifact System. The artifacts are marvelous items like dragon scales, goblin wings, dwarven mallets, and more. Now for the $5,000 cash giveaway, there are two ways to win. If you click the link in the description below, there is a might ranking, and the top might ranked player will win $500. Other chances for $200 cash are also available in the might ranking. In addition, you can spin the lucky wheel and win cash every time you upgrade your castle. And for everyone, $350 Lords Mobile gift packs will be offered to you after you download the game. Thanks again to Lords Mobile for sponsoring, now back to the video. So you saw, we've been teasing this since the last episode of Cursed Gun Images, but it's finally here. So time to check out what I just picked up. I guess we're gonna start where I always start, with my zipper. What? All right, so, and I will tell you this, if you are squeamish, you might want to avert your eyes. This is that Cursed AK build. Look at it. Now, if you don't know what you're looking for, this doesn't look too, too bad, but it is one of those scenarios where the longer you look, the worse it gets. I can pretty confidently say about this build that literally nothing was done properly. And I can already hear some of you saying, Brandon, this really doesn't even look that bad. Okay, sure, it's a little ugly and, you know, nothing was riveted properly or at all, like really at all. But that can't affect the function that much. I mean, he still built the gun, right? It's not like it could be that bad. It can be that bad. This is fully assembled for the record. So before we go too hard in the paint, like this gentleman clearly did before he put it together, what is this supposed to be? It's an AK, dumbass. Specifically, this is a Yugoslavian M70 B1. It was Yugoslavia's AKM variant uh, with a fixed stock, chambered in 7.62x39 uh, with a stamped receiver. This is what that is supposed to look like. Everything riveted nicely, nice and tight, everything looking good. The stamped receiver is actually doing receiver things and has a bulge up front. We'll get into that in a minute. Of course, mine has the uh, grenade launching spigot up front um, for, uh, for reasons. But even just comparing them visually, you, versus the guy she told you not to worry about. You also smoke a lot of meth. A lot. So where the hell did I even find this thing in the first place? So my buddy Brian over at Occam Defense had this thing roll through his shop the other day. Put down the pitchforks, he didn't build it. Somebody had brought it in, I assume under the suspicion that something might be wrong with it. 
So he posted a quick bit on Instagram showing some of the uh, key highlights of how fucked up this thing is. And I cringed so hard that I knew I had to have it. Because that's what we do here. Which you would know if you were subscribed. And if you're not subscribed, you probably don't need therapy as much as the guys who are. So if you want more shit like this to keep you up at night, go ahead and subscribe. So now let's look at the receiver. So AKs have two types of receivers. This one right here has a milled receiver. This is when it's uh, milled down from a solid chunk of billet or forged steel. The other type, which is far more common, is your stamped receiver, which we have here, a bulged uh, you know, stamped receiver here. We got our tantals here. Uh, this is just stamped sheet metal where it is uh, cut to size and folded into place and, and you know, of course, heat treated and all. The difference is they use precision dies to make sure everything is bent perfectly in alignment to be able to be used as a receiver. What they do not do is molest it with a ball peeing and hammer until it vaguely resembles the shape of an AK. This probably started obviously as a receiver flat, you know, where it's not pre-bent and you know, it's kind of like an, an 80% uh, for an AK. Uh, that was really popular back in the day. It was just a flat receiver that you get a bending jig for and uh, put it in a press and fold it up over. Even if this guy did have a folding jig for this, which he clearly did not, this isn't even the right receiver for this gun. This is a regular trunnion receiver, like you'd have something like here where it's just flat all the way across. The M70s have bulged front trunnions, which is, you know, a little bulge in the sheet metal as well to accommodate for, I don't know, a thicker trunnion. It's almost like there's steel in the way. Not a problem for this guy. Uh, he's just kind of beat the shit out of it and uh, just kind of work around it until it vaguely takes the shape and the metal just gets out of the way. Life hack. The magwell is just so openly flared here. Uh, this is just like a bass mouth uh, <laughs> receiver or magwell. So now how do we attach this to the gun? Well, uh, we basically hammer in some rivets here. When you decide you feel like it, there's just like rivets like this on this gun that just aren't fucking there. They just, you know, didn't show up for work. And you see this rivet hole up here where this would have been, again, for a standard receiver, you'd have uh, two up top, where on the M70 you have one down for the, uh, the Magwell uh, rivet, you have one up and then one down again. Now let's just breeze over the fact that these are just flat out the wrong rivets and this rivet shouldn't even be here. I think that's holding in the inner rail. Look to the trigger guard. I just love that you just hold this gun upside down and it falls on safety. That actually works, holy shit. <laughs> it's very safe, uh, unless you're trying to operate upside down. It's also probably not safe at all to shoot, which makes me feel great about having to do that later. Stick around to see how that goes. Pray for me if that's your thing. But now see down here on the trigger guard and the uh, mag release, uh, not the most, you know, pressure bearing part, but still these are supposed to be four rivets and uh, it's just nut screw combo straight from an erector set. Our rear trunnion rivets are just absolutely smashed to shit. And uh, this one's completely cut away because the Yugos have this little button here. So to take off the, uh, the dust cover and move this, uh, remove the recoil spring assembly, you have to press that button in and that gets it out of the way. There we go. So lift up our dust cover. We'll get to all that goodness inside later. So here to accommodate for uh, this space taken up by this button, uh, he decided to just cut off the top part of that rivet. You know, that's just the rivet that holds your rear trunnion in. It's all right, it's uh, not doing a good job anyway. Could you zoom in on that please? Like zoom in like right here, how easy I am able to move the entire rear trunnion. Yeah, that's barely secured by one rivet that is also moving. Like that, that is teeter tottering as I'm doing this. So this is, oh man, I really don't wanna shoot this now. Yeah, he cut through the entire upper part of the receiver here and uh, did the same on the other side. Don't do that, but wait, there's more. So let's take this out, take our bolt and carrier out of the gun. Which, that is the sad part, is that this is a really nice parts kit. Um, all things considered, he didn't fuck with the bolt, he didn't fuck with the uh, the bolt carrier. The uh, the barrel is the original barrel from what I can tell, so this was a head-spaced uh, original barrel, like front end assembly with a front trunnion and all. The headspace is still great, which means, you know, I at least theoretically shouldn't completely blow up. But it really sucks because this is a nice kit that's just completely been bastardized. 
I'm saying is basically here forward, with the exception of the receiver and the rivets, was built in Yugoslavia. Now, Serbia, technically. In words of Markiplier, this, this is great. I like this. Little worried about this. Uh, this, this is just not good. And here we just have a rusty kind of spare stamped receiver that we just had laying around the shop. Uh, but what I'm gonna use this to demonstrate besides uh, why it's important to keep your rust under control uh, is the center support. So that is the post that is right there in the middle of the receiver. So basically what this is, is this is just a little, like it says, a center support uh, to give the stamped receiver a little bit more rigidity and it also can act as a hammer stop when the bolt and carrier are not installed and you still dry fire does less damage to the gun. So that steel cylinder is riveted in place with a long rivet. As you can see, there are there is a rivet going through here. So it's through one side, out the other, and smashed. Not the best example of it. This is kind of a cheaper receiver, but you get the idea. Here we get a screw, a flathead screw, and uh, again, a rector set nut combo here with a super, super small uh, threaded screw that I mean, it's already noticeably bent if you can't see that very well. Yeah, that is noticeably bent because I imagine the guy did this more than a few times. Now that we're looking through the top of the gun, uh, first of all, it is just dirty as shit. And just a lot of, I don't know, just nasty grease and cosmoline and you know, whatever else. Uh, I imagine you probably had to keep this fairly well lubricated to have a prayer in hell of running. But you'll notice that the receiver is absolutely smashed. None of this is straight. Uh, it's heavily, heavily warped. And uh, the fact that the bolt carrier is able to pass through this freely or relatively freely is just a testament to the AK platform. <laughs> also notice that sometimes, see if it does it. Okay, no, went into battery that time. There we go, sometimes it does that which just means there's way too much fucking play going on here and the bolt is just allowed to prematurely rotate before it even gets into the trunnion, which stops up the whole thing. Frankly, is not very good at all for the bolt, so I'm not gonna do that a whole lot because I am going to try to salvage this parts kit, but we'll get to that later. There you go. But still, the fact that this even kind of works as thrown together as this is, like, it's one of those, like, Tony Stark was able to build this in a cave with a box of scraps. Like, this is... Seriously, like an afternoon throw together job uh, because you have an ambush in three hours. Like that is, that is what this shit is. There's a million other little things that I could bitch about with this gun uh, that I'm just not gonna go into because it's just really, really in-depth stuff. But I know what you're thinking. Will it AK? I'm nervous, but we're about to find out. So we're out here on the range uh, going to attempt to test fire this without, uh, well, you know, having the rapid, unscheduled disassembly. And a little extra insight as to, besides the obvious why I'm nervous, all the lockup is between the bolt and the front trunnion, of which freely moves. So we're gonna try it first. I've got two rounds of Bellum loaded up. I don't wanna load up any more than that right now uh, because uh, I don't know if this is gonna run away or what. I've never shot this and I, didn't really want to. I also do want to point out with the mag fitment, this magwell is more of a suggestion. Uh, if you look at this, it's just so blown open. Uh, it locks in pretty decent, but that can't be good for feeding. I'm just gonna throw that out there. I'm honestly fucking nervous. Um, so I might go a little bit overboard. I actually brought just the thing. Voila! On top of being peak Tarkov LARP, this is my uh, Scott insurance, uh, so to speak. Got an OpsCore Fast SF with the ballistic mandible, specifically meant for fragmentation. So when I've got the gun like this, hopefully that's gonna protect shards of shit from going into my neck. Not shit, not literal human shit, but like chunks of gun, you know what I mean. All right. That was the most sluggish chambering I've ever seen on an AK. That's because it didn't pick up a round. That's cool. What a fucking winner, dude. Come here, check this out. <laughs> what the fuck, man? It's totally missing. We may not be able to shoot this. 
Oh, there you go. If I hold the magazine up, it wants to go, kinda. Close enough, cool, all right. <laughs> yeah, backing up's probably a good idea. All right, one like equals one prayer. Hoping for the best. Three, two. Well, let me not hold it there just in case the magazine blows out the bottom. That's usually a terrible place to grab if you're expecting the gun to explode. Uh, this is probably a little safer, we'll see. Redefining rifle grenade in three, two, one. Okay, well it almost actually picked up another round. That's interesting. That recoil impulse is super weird. So it's not exploding, that's a plus. The recoil impulse is super weird on it because it feels almost like a bolt gun because you're getting like half of the cycling. You're getting that, but it's holding back like here. It doesn't want to go forward, like right there. Um, so that's not super pleasant. That premature rotation of the bolt is happening pretty severely where it'll stop forward here to where the round is actually freely on its own will pretty much fully seated in the chamber, but the bolt is lagging back here because it's rotated too early because it's trying to lock, but there's nothing to lock into because it's just a shittily made receiver. Well, now that we proved that the gun running away on us is really the last of our concerns, let's try it with a Magatula. See if we can get any decent results out of it, or at least a couple of consecutive rounds. Come on, little buddy. All right, there you go. Just needs a little encouragement sometimes. This gun needs a fluffer to work. Oh, that one almost fully seated. Yeah, yeah, I know, a flinch, yeah. That fucking worked. Almost. You know, we're kind of getting to the point where I think I would almost rather have an Anderson AR-15. <laughs> so it's not totally surprising that this is quote unquote safe to shoot just because the lockup and everything like said is in the front trunnion here. And uh, you know, the shit that makes this not blow up is the front trunnion forward. So all this stuff was made by a Yugoslavian factory by Zastava. This was made by well, an idiot. So this part works great. This part, the actual function of the gun, so to speak. Not so much. Try to help that magazine in a little bit more. So hopefully now you guys realize just why I had to show you guys this thing. Uh, this is, I've seen a lot of shitty AK builds uh, over the years, a lot, a lot of shitty AK builds. This one has got to take the cake for a couple of reasons as far as a cursed AK parts kit build where you took a really good parts kit and slapped it together so shitty, but it still somehow kind of runs. Honestly, again, just big shout out to Mickey K. Like, Mikhail Kalashnikov really nailed it with this shit, cause uh, if you're this far out of spec with pretty much anything besides a fucking flintlock, that is a recipe for disaster. So the fact that this is even semi-functional is just mind blowing. I guess those are the tolerances you have to design shit for when it's being translated into eight different languages and being made, you know, in 30 different countries. 
by uh, less than willing participant workers in a lot of cases who can't read. It's a miracle any of these things work. Anyhow, my big plan with this thing is that since this is just a really, really nice kit, just begging to be brought to life, like uh, it's uh, older brother over here, if we get 100,000 likes on this video, which should be easy, you should have liked the video already. Come on, are you not entertained? If we get 100,000 likes, I will do a video uh, breaking this thing down completely and then rebuilding it as an uncursed AK. Or just an AK. But I think it would be a fitting end just to be able to show you something so horrific and give it a happy ending. Because if there's one thing I love, it's happy endings. So anyhow, if you'd like to see that, there's an easy way to make it happen. Just go ahead and hit that like button. And while you're down there, be sure to subscribe and make sure you're still subscribed because YouTube still kind of does that unsubscribing our subscribers from us thing every now and again. So just, you know, stay on top of it. Make sure that, uh, you know, I'd, we don't create too much distance accidentally. Nobody can come between us is what I'm saying. Anyhow, that's about all I've got for this video. I appreciate you guys watching until the end. And as always, I will see you sexy YouTube mother lovers in the next video. Thanks, guys. Session to make the perfect weapon like us put his eyes to the top. But the killer should just stop, just stop, just stop, just stop, just stop, just stop, just stop. If you have any small, uh, well, the, with the zipper joke, that doesn't really work. I was gonna say, if you have any small children in the room, now's the time to leave. The other type, which is far more common, fuck. You merely adapted to the lob. I was born with it, molded by it. I did not touch a woman until I was a man. <laughs> yeah. Remember a while back when High Point was uh, teasing about making a line of AKs? I think I might have accidentally stumbled upon the prototype. Because if there's one thing I love, it's happy endings. That camera punch was so uncomfortable because I watched it happen. <laughs> I, can, I can see it in the fucking lens. I'm like, oh no, oh no, this is the bit. This is what it's gonna look like. Fuck, I'm on somebody's big screen. I, I'm panicking, what do I do?